Hi everyone, Mature Simmer here. Welcome to another map tour. Today I'm going to be taking a look at West B, Wisconsin, which is a 4X map that was released in the last... Yeah, it was released on February 26th. This is the spawn point, so we're here by the John Deere dealership. Uh, lots of John Deere boxes inside and so forth. So the first thing, uh, there are a lot of additional files that come with the map that you need to load when the map is there. So I'm going to walk through that first before we get into the rest of this tour. So Westby, Wisconsin is a map that has a lot of additional mods that are needed with it that come with the file itself. There's a few things I have here, I'll point those out, that obviously have nothing to do with Westby, but that have to do with me testing the map. But I'll just want to make sure that you understand in case you have other mods loaded, or in case you have other mods in your directory, that you know specifically which ones you're going to need for Westby. So there are 14 additional files on top of the map, so 15 files in total. So the 14 mods are the 4x60 hay shed, the beef shed, corn dryer, gal 125 grinder, these grain bins, JMF's tea stall or tie stall, machine shed, placeable 72 by 150 buildings pack, placeable refill tanks, slurry field bunker, tired irons tie stall, the map itself, Westby tie stall number two, commodity shed, and Westby free stall. So those are the things you need. Everything else I skipped over are just other mods that I use when I'm doing map reviews. All right, thanks for coming back. So here we are on Westby, Wisconsin. Now, this was a map that was in FS19 by name, but uh, it was not, however, in the same configuration it is here. So, got interesting stuff, tractors, Without wheels here, looks kind of like a little bit of a, a graveyard for some equipment maybe that they have along the wall. So the big difference is this is now a 4X map, where in its FS19 incarnation it was just a 1X map. So let's start with the description given to us by Tired Iron Modding and MB Farms about exactly what they've given us here. The wait is finally over. West before x for FS22 has been released. This map was originally made at the beginning of FS19 by Tired Iron Modding. We both worked on updating the map once a year around Christmas, and it kind of became tradition at that point. Towards the end of FS19, we made a 4X version in two weeks' time, which we never released. Looking back on it now, we're all glad we didn't, just because it was so rushed and we just wanted something to play on. Back in mid-December, we decided to bring the 4X version back to life in 22. We decided to completely rebuild the map from the ground up and start fresh in the new game. The project took just over two months to complete, which I feel is a pretty good time for a 4X as detailed as this is. If it weren't for the help of these people, the map wouldn't have been possible. Tired Iron Modding, JMF Modding, Central Ohio Modding, Kedrick Farms, and many others who helped either with making the map or testing it towards the end. The key is that basically they've redone this specifically for FS22 to take advantage of things like, you know, the textures, so forth and so on. So let's jump into the PDA and take a look at where we're at and get a lay of the land. All right, so here we are in the PDA. And as you can see, it certainly looks different than anything I'm used to. I'm from near the area. I grew up in Illinois, which is just south of Wisconsin. I've never been to this area that I'm aware of. And so these striped type of fields and the layouts is something I'm not used to. Wisconsin's kind of bordering on the Great Plains and you tend to get some of that vast fields at least with what I'm familiar with in southern Wisconsin. 
So based on the fact that I'm not used to seeing this, I did take a look because I wanted to see where in Wisconsin this is. So here's a little bit of what I've learned. Westby is over toward the Mississippi River near the west side. And a little bit of trivia is Westby is a Norwegian word that literally means western city. So that's where the name came from. It's got a population of 2,472 people as of 2019. So this is a very sparsely populated area. Definitely, you know, what you'd expect in a farm community with a lot of fields and so forth. Keep in mind, again, this is a 4X map. So it looks like, you know, there's fields here that you may say, gee, they're, they're tiny. But keep in mind the scale. So if we go here... We can start to see there's blocks of fields that are for sale, so they're not really sold individually, although field three here is. But even field three here is 36 acres. This block is 53 acres. Here's a little bit smaller one. Here's a much larger one, so 149 acres in this span, well over a million dollars. This down here, 179. So you do have to buy your fields in clumps. 218, this looks like the biggest one that I've come across. $1.5 million. So at this point, I'm just kind of eyeballing things. So yeah, this looks like the, the busiest space up here. But as you start getting to the west of the state, it made a lot more sense to me of what we're seeing on the map because let me go back in here instead of hopping out you do start to get a lot hillier as you start getting into the Mississippi River uh, region so it's it's not uncommon as you're driving west that way to suddenly go from flat plains to some really interesting terrain. I don't know if that's a cause of the river meandering over time and then cutting things into the ground and then eventually ending up where it's at or, or how that happened. Uh, but that's a big reason I believe for some of these striped fields is because I think we're basically going to be looking at some terraced farming to some degree so I will be curious. So we're starting out down here at the store just south of field 9596. If we switch here to farmland mode, you can see there's nothing we own, um, you know, other than obviously the just the general land that doesn't have any fields in it, but we don't own any fields, so there is no starting farm per se. If I take a quick look at the crop calendar, They've certainly made some changes here from the base. Usually, you know, wheat and barley are, are plantable about the same time. Canola's here. It doesn't look like they've moved that, but they've then moved the harvest time up into spring instead of late summer from the base map. A lot of this planting is similar, but they've extended things that are specific to the region, like corn and soybeans, to have a longer harvest period. Uh, and also, in some cases, it looks like, in the case of soybeans, a longer planting period. But they have allowed you to continue to do things like grapes, olives, sugarcane, and cotton, which wouldn't traditionally be used in this area. And the next thing we'll take a look at is what can you sell on the map and what is, is kind of standard and how is it set up. So it looks like there's some silos available that will store these items. They don't have anything there, but we can see we've got three cell points for wheat, barley, oats, just a couple for canola, a couple for sorghum. There's no cell points for grapes or olives, so in theory because... So even though you can grow them, just be aware you're going to have to figure out what you're going to do with them if you're going to use them, so they're not represented on the map uh, with the ability to sell them. Sunflowers, soybeans, corn, Similarly, potatoes, sugar beet uh, can't be sold, but yet sugar beet cut or cut sugar beets can. Cotton sugar cane also not available. As far as the animal byproducts, you've got eggs, wool, milk. 
so you can do all the standards. No cell point for wood chips, silage grass. Um, well, clearly there's an option, a lot of options for grass. Hay, straw, and then so productions themselves. Honey can be purchased at the feed or sold at the, uh, you can sell honey at the feed store. And then you have some of the greenhouse crops of lettuce, tomatoes, and strawberries can be sold at the feed store. Then there's ear corn and dry ear corn and dry corn. So there is the corn dryer, if you recall, was one of the things that was one of the mods that was required. So clearly because you have the corn dryer, you have the various options for corn. No place to sell stones and really nothing else from the production side can be sold either. So if you choose to use productions on this map, you would have to alleviate that or you'll have nowhere to sell things. If we take a look at those who might be interested in animals, we've got Beef Pasture 3. Beef Pasture 3 can be found here on the map just south of fields 127-28, north of 107-108, so not too far from where we're at. So next I'm taking a look at production chains, and you can see we've got the corn dryer and then the feed store hammer mill, both of all of which you have available to you in new farmer mode immediately. So you can take 100 ears of corn and turn out 95 of dry corn, and then high moisture corn and high moisture ear corn just kind of passes through and then you've got all these items that turn into mineral feed based on what product you put in and it looks like it's a one for one so going back to the PDA on what we have as kind of cell points or anything that we can work with we've got hilltop grains here, a liquid fertilizer tank, a seed tank, a gas station solid fertilizer tank and a lime station. So up here it looks like basically is our supply. We've already talked about the beef pasture. This is the southern grain complex. And here we've got bale sales, the corn dryer, feed store sales, animal dealer are all here. And then Premier Cooperative and bale sales there. And that covers the items that we can see readily on the map. If I jump into flight mode, we'll head on up and we'll just kind of take a quick look, first look at what we've got. So rolling hills, uh, as we kind of expected, definitely various options and, and ways to look at, at things here. And so we'll head, we'll head over this way. Wanted to bring the HUD back up so you can see the mini-map. So you can kind of keep your bearings on where we're at. So we'll head down south here. So as you can see, you know, there's some buildings placed around. I think these are all just placeables. They didn't come up on the map. Uh, we'll take a look and see if we buy some of these. If suddenly they become things we can interact with. So there's a major cow facility or production facility here. So if you look at these buildings, um, you know, you're looking at giant uh, cow barns there. We'll take a look at them in our driving tour. So a lot of different terrain. Looks like a good road network to get you to various fields. Um, we can see this uh, kind of terraced layout as we've seen. So it doesn't look like you have to farm it that way, but I'm sure similar to, you know, what the region is like. That's what that's there for. So here are some of the sale points. I think that's the bale sale that we looked at. 
you've got some items here. Uh, we'll take a look at what those are on the field. Here's the road with some traffic heading out of town. We've got more items up here. So that's the uh, JMF tie stall building. Looks like it's placed there. Lots of different farms and barns that you can look at on the map. And again, we'll buy a couple pieces of these lands just to see if we're able to then interact with, with those. So heading up this way, we can see just a lot of variation. And certainly here, the terracing uh, makes more sense. As you can see, the steepness of the hills is pretty significant. We've got this ravine or gulch here. If you wanted to do some logging, you've got some trees here, obviously. But you'll be doing some work to get them out of there, I'm sure. So, a lot of different field sizes, a lot of different options for you on the map, depending on what you'd like to do. So, it looks like the other side of the map is a little flatter than when we start heading here. And we've got a lot more hills in this area. They didn't mention anything about using DEM data, so I don't know if they are or not. All right, so this is up near 129, but you can see kind of the image that we have. It looks like these are where the farms are. So there's other items down there owned by John Sanford. Multiple fields. I'm guessing this is a cattle or dairy operation, and those are just pathways the cows have worn into the ground as they've gone back and forth from the barn. And there we go. Let's see, are we... Right, so we're here by the Southern Grain Complex. This area up here is where this beef pasture is. Um, it's right, right under us here. So, looks like, um, you know, that's kind of set up. You can see the fences from up here. So it looks like this is a pasture that's put in place on the map. So definitely very interesting looking map. A lot of, as I said, variety, choices for you to do things. And we're back here at the John Deere dealer. All right, so I've gone ahead and added some money in just so we can go ahead and do a few things. So I'm gonna buy a few pieces of land here so that as we drive around, I've got uh, some things that we can just check out and make sure that we see if we can interact with them or not. Gone ahead and bought a pickup truck. This is where the spawn point is for vehicles, so it's way back here in the yard, but plenty of room then to go ahead and purchase a bunch of equipment if you need to do that. So it just looks like kind of uh, how that's laid out. Looks like maybe that's where they'd have their equipment for sale uh, in the actual location, assuming this is modeled after something that's actually out there. So we'll go ahead and we'll head west on the map first, as we're a little closer to that western edge. And again, we'll get down closer to ground level so you can kind of get a feeling and a view of what things look like and feel like. So we've got 
some significant elevation as mentioned so I'm gonna hop out of my car here I just want to go take a look at what we've got oh this is uh, I think a marker for drain tile so they've actually got those placed here on the map which is pretty sweet uh, to drain the fields out so I think that's what we were seeing up above but they've got those placed in the fields so this is one of the first areas or one of the areas I had bought is up here where we have this silo complex because I was looking for kind of the larger map points that had things on them to see if we suddenly then are able to interact with the buildings or not so we'll turn in here this looks like field 97 98 so we've got a house we don't see any sleep point there but looks like we've got a corn dryer hop out and take a look and it's not giving us any kind of indication that there's anything we can interact with just want to make sure that seeing things so um, let's see if we can open the doors on the shed here we can so we are then able to interact with them. So these are buildings that you can utilize. One of the other things that I know people are always curious about is can I sell them? So let's take a look as I try to click on them. It does not look like they're removable. That one is. So I can sell that shed. The silos, however, are not removable by selling them, so those are um, placeables that are there. Corn dryer can be sold. The house cannot be sold. The shed can be sold. That's one of the mods, the commodity shed. again but those barns cannot be sold so you do have some things at least on this farm that are uh, permanent or would be more challenging to remove so we'll take a look similarly at other things when we uh, when we do that And, and go around the map okay so looks like there's like an interaction point floating way above the corn dryer up there you can't quite get out but you can see it right above there so that's an interesting place to have that let me see um, can I even get up there It does let me do an R and so you can see now we've got these stave silos since we bought some farms so we do get some additional productions and there's an additional corn dryer which is the one we're at here hence it's highlighting so we don't have to climb up there to interact with that point which is important because that would probably be a challenge so let's kind of head head back out on the road, see what we've got. And we'll continue heading west. So you can see 109, it is a smaller field. So if we, you know, get out and take a look at it, just so you get an idea, uh, basically 1.8 well, this is 109 so let's see because there's several fields here so one yeah 1.81 acres for that field but you're buying multiple fields when you buy it so you can't just have that field 
Now in this case, obviously we don't own these particular grounds, this farm, so I can't do anything there. I think I'm pretty close to the edge of the map. All right, so this is actually an interesting thing where we've got um, multiple beef pastures with what we've bought and so forth. So as you purchase things, you're going to be able to have additional places to put your animals. So there's some work there. Or some options there that you can discover. So yeah, obviously we, you know, we bought this. We got some additional points there. We bought these fields. So it does appear that as we buy things, you're going to have additional items that show up. So that's Beef Pasture 8 as compared to Beef Pasture 3, which was kind of there and available in the initial group we had. And then you've got other Beef, beef Pastures, the Stave Silos up here. Um, but yeah, there's, well, there's a Southern Grain Complex, so... Well, I think that may have been on the map as a point we could interact with. So the piece I was looking at is, yeah, if we head over, I don't think we can go up and down as easily. So we'll go up this way. We'll check out that farm up north. Just getting a little closer to the road here. Watch for livestock. So nice addition there. So we'll head up to that field. So yeah, these are some of the pastures. So you know, we can have cattle in there, which is nice. So definitely some significant elevation changes. So if you're looking for a map it gives you that variety. This will certainly do that. And with 133 fields, you've also got you know, quite a, a lot of things to keep you busy. So now certainly in some areas of Wisconsin where you have a lot of dairy, um, you know, I do see this kind of muddy tramp down areas where the grass just doesn't grow and some of that I think is the coldness of the climate being up north as far as it is grass doesn't have a lot of warm months to recover in so we'll pull into the yard here so we can see we've got animal area here so we're able to have 80 cows in there. I'm going to go ahead and buy a few. So we'll go ahead and buy 10. We'll just, obviously, they're 20. We'll just ship them here, obviously. All right. So um, none in here right now, but we can get our feed in there. So yeah, they're out here in the yard and just we'll take a little bit of a walk around, but you can start to see like these pastures are extensive, like these cows are all around this area, uh, including like back here. So, uh, you know, there's there's a lot here for how your cows will get spread around. So let's see how far back this goes. Um, I think this might be it. So yeah, so this is a beef pasture. But you've got room for your cattle to roam and the nice thing is, you know, they spread out all over the, the field and you know, really give it that. This I think feels very authentic to what I'm used to and you know, Wisconsin cattle set up. Um, well, hello there. Definitely enjoying laying there in the in the mud a bit, keeping herself cool. I'm sure, and that one just laid down too. So, 
you know, this gives you a good example, but basically as you buy certain farms, you'll be able to do, uh, you know, various things with them. I'm assuming this is my... Well, now I have to... It's maybe where I drop some other items. I'm hitting the wrong key. I'm like I'm stuck, but I'm really not. And once again, we can interact with all these barns and so forth, and then, um, you know, use them for appropriate storage. So, you know, really nice um, layouts. The one thing we don't have, you know, are sleep triggers that are appearing um, along with the homes. So while you have a house here, you'd have to go ahead and just do a placeable sleep trigger of some sort if this became your home farm. So, yeah, so um, let me head back to the truck here. And let me determine where we're going to go. So the other farm I bought was over here, and then we've got the cattle down there. So I'll take this road and try to get there. So yeah, with these larger maps, obviously the tours take a little bit longer because um, obviously there's a lot more to cover. Uh, I can get out before he gets here. Alright, so we've got our nice groups of cattle. We'll definitely be doing some more of that when we get to the large cattle farm. Alright, try not to run into things. So, another farm with corn dryer. We didn't buy that, but you know, there's definitely places to start up your operations. When I look around, I always drive in the wrong location, so I need to be careful with that. So yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think you'd have to keep the fields in the striped pattern if you would prefer not to. So, um, it's also interesting that these here, and I think it could be just because it's a little flatter when they're not on the hill, they aren't always striped. But, you know, short of the little bit of kind of grass in between, it looks like on these we can go ahead and, and kind of carve that out. And I think up here by 48 and then come in is going to be the cleanest way to go. As I said, you know, it's a little flatter up here, but certainly as you can see, there's, you know, a, a drop away. That's the the cow complex that we'll be heading to last. Alright, whoops, I want to hit the sign. I am not the safest driver here. Got one hand on the wheel, one hand on my mouse to look around, so too much uh, unable to do hand-eye coordination, I guess. But yeah, you can see kind of up and down on the hills there. Here's the road we want to go down. So a very nice kind of driveway into the farm here. Lots of red barns. So this is certainly a nice little farm over here. Corn on one of our fields, actually on both of them. So we've got a bunker silo. Once again, um, you know, several things. So we've got 71 ahead of us. Okay, there's the 
animal barn. So let's see, we can trigger that here somewhere. Might be too close. Let me turn it on because clearly I'm not hitting the trigger. Where is it? Well, this is interesting because it's clearly not not where the uh, icon is. I don't understand. Can I go in? Maybe it's at this level. I am able to go in there, so let's see what we see. Won't let me there either. Huh. So I would like to add some cattle here, but clearly it's not going to let me. So, um, seems there may be something off with some of these. But yeah, clearly I'm not getting an animal dialogue. Let's see if maybe we find one some other location. I'm imagining we won't. But the good news is, you know, all of this opens up kind of along um, long corridor there. Gets us there to again a little little farmhouse. Close the gate, open the gate. All right. This almost looks like a horse paddock or something. But once again, not seeing any trigger point offhand. All right, so this is a bunker silo kind of buried in the ground there. Oh. I'm going to end up falling on the ground if I'm not careful. Cow shit pile. Well, they're pretty, uh, pretty descriptive. It does tell you, <laughs> tell you what it is. People are pretty, uh, cle clearly spoken in Wisconsin. So, that, that goes right along with it. But yeah, we've got, um... Let's see. Doesn't look like it's going to give me any kind of indication. It's telling me open gate, close gate. I don't know if that's on top. Might be. Or is it a trigger for the building somewhere? Not sure. So we've got a shed there. Some place there. We've got a large shed here. So definitely plenty of room to put your equipment if you want to make this farm your home. So, sorry I couldn't get the animal dialogue to work there. Let me see if there's a way... Because, yeah, it looks like there we've got the beef pasture here, which is down the hill. Um, again, not seeing any animal trigger per se because I'm assuming if I can put some animals in here that would work very well wandering around the hillside as well but I don't know where that trigger might be and it might be just tied to that that barn um, yeah, I just really wish I could get that working that would be great Let's see what's in here. Oh, this is the other side. And then I assume this... Oh. There's cows. The milking room over there. Um, I assume those are placeable cows because we obviously don't own any. It won't let me click on the small free stall there and add them. So not for lack of trying for certain, but um, I think we've spent enough time trying. So let's head on out. 
that that might be something that needs to be looked at in a future iteration of the map is that animal dialogue trigger is if there's a way to trigger it it's not intuitive how about that um, all right now what's the easiest way to get down here maybe this way between the fields and then over not quite sure but we'll take a look So, um, you know, you've got a pretty good view of what, what options we have here on the map. There's another farm there that you'd be able to work with. So, yeah, there's not a specific count um, that they at least made us aware of, of farms that you can use. But it certainly looks like pretty much anything you'd like to use uh, you can buy and then the buildings operate accordingly with some minor exceptions such as what we saw where it's just a little more uh, challenging to get there. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get over there. I thought there was something that looked like a road. I guess I'm talking about the next location there. So let me see, past field, whoops, 83 here. It looks like there's some sort of dirt down the side. Whoop, that was almost a bad glancing accident. But yes, there is a road here. We got cut across road. That is pretty descriptive. Um, Not sure. I know some maps I've looked at, the signposts were the same at each intersection. Alright, so that gets us, oh, okay, to the location. Ah, that's the, uh, the John Deere dealer. So that's the store. And then we'll head over. So Cherokee feeds, and then this will get us to some more locations. So there's another farm there that you could start on, and of course we've got the, uh, I think I can get there this way, you know what, I'm going to go over here, just because it looks like we have a big sign there. and might have a fancy name for this cow complex. I do like that large grain silo over the horizon just dropped below the hill. Got another farm up there. So this is, what is it? Select Sires. Your success, our passion. So definitely not a small complex here as we saw from the air. This might be expected. A lot of grass because we would need to do a lot of mowing to keep these guys going. I'm imagining the cattle here will stay within the barns. Let's see if we can figure out how we populate them. Any kind of triggers anywhere? Not seeing any. Alright, there's like the milking machine that we can likely have them pick things up. There's another set here. So yeah, they're located around. I assume they store up in those tanks there. Looks like we've got some trigger points here. Let's see. Okay, this is the slurry pump. So this was one of the um, 
the mods that you had to load with the map was that. So yeah, I'm not quite sure. These are just designs, but let me go there. Maybe this will give me triggers here, or maybe not. Hmm. So once again, a bit of a challenge to figure out exactly how to interact with these. But as I would expect, a, a large shed there's a little house, satellite dish and all. Circle around this way, bunker silos. These are kind of pass through, so we'll go ahead and go that way. Go to the other side of the building. So I just feel like I'm missing something as far as how I would add animals in here. It should not be this difficult. All right, again, another one of those very descriptive names. So we're back by the slurry trigger. But I'm not seeing any way to load animals here. So I can't say I would know with any certainty, if you were to buy this, how you would properly get uh, animals in there. Because, yeah, these are all slurry triggers here, which obviously implies there's going to be slurry made by some animals. But nothing that is showing up to let me purchase those animals here. Now maybe you show up with a trailer and drop them off and, and that'll be good, but let's see, let's just enter the vehicle. Oh, won't let me open that. Won't let me open this. No. can't jump in there either, or at least I missed the opportunity. There we go. So yeah, this is kind of jammed in here as the milking machine. So yeah, these doors don't work. I can't open them. So yeah, just having the help screen up so that if I see some kind of a trigger change, I can do something about it. But right now, not seeing that. So we do have a setup. It's just um, I can't tell you how to interact with it. So I've got a harvester here. One of the things I want to do is check and make sure that course play will work with this map because there are certainly questions that people have on various maps about that. So let's head on in here, create a job, change it to course play. Um, I'm going to pick the field. It looks like it gives us the appropriate layout. You pick a different field. All right. So in this case, you can see there's some problems on these areas uh, where it does it in segments. Well, yes and no. Although that is a, a separate piece from. Oh, and now this picked both. So yeah, definitely a little bit of a problem with some of the striped fields. Um, let me move on over here. Just take a look. That gives us the right boundary. So many of these work appropriately. Um, but yeah, others are going to give you perhaps something a little different than what you would expect. Um, even 12 here, you can see 
Uh, well, there's in theory a separate field there. Let me see how that works. On this map, yeah, that is... Yeah, so there's a challenge of... There's definitely more of a challenge of, of making this work as you'd expect. So if I do this, now if I do this piece here, all right, down below, it doesn't pick that up, but it does there. So it's definitely very finicky about where you select things. So the boundaries are maybe a little bit different than you might expect. But um, overall, I mean, it, it could be worse given the complexity of the field layout. I missed the field there. Look. Yeah, that got everything. That got everything. So yeah, it's not terrible. Um, it just might not be exactly what you'd be expecting. So, like here, you can see it's a little convoluted. And if I pick there, now it includes that. So there are some challenges in certain spaces, depending on what you select. But obviously ones that are independent like this seem to work pretty well, wherever they're divided. Oops. All right, so even that one that's com pretty complex, um, you know, gives you a layout again. Now, could it come up with a course play course? Let's see. So, uh, if this fails, I'm just going to exit out. But so we'll let it try to generate. But if it locks up or doesn't let me continue, because as you can see, it took a bit of time here. It's not doing anything. Usually if I click somewhere else, it's going to freeze up for certain. Close the course generator. Let me go down here. Oh, see, even there toward the edge, it picked something vastly different than what I had. So, we set the target position, try to generate the course here, we'll see if it works. Okay, so if I close that, you can see it generated a course, but it's not a course I really would like it to run. Um, so, course play is going to have some challenges with this map. Um, fields are thin, they're not straight, um, so that's what we've got with course play. So at this point, you know, I think we're at where we are at the tail end of all of our map tours, which is uh, what I use this map. It's definitely unique. Uh, it's definitely one of those that I wouldn't discount and wouldn't not play. Um, I think it would require some thought on how you would do things. would have to uh, think about how I would do it. I think it would require some more thought than a lot of other maps just because of the myriad amount of choices. Uh, there's obviously some issues with some of the animal triggers we ran into, but in some cases they worked really well. So I think there'd be a bit of trial and error here, but if you're willing to do that, and you're looking for an American map in the Midwest, uh, this is certainly one that would be worth a try, especially given that it's a, a 4X, gives you a lot of options. Um, and if you're looking for something for multiplayer, it might be an excellent option as well. So as always, uh, if you've enjoyed this, please Subscribe so you can get notified of new videos, and I will see you next time.